What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We're back here on 2K today and today we're going to be talking about the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat's window could be closing very well soon because obviously Jimmy Butler is not getting any younger. This team is still very, very good in the East right now. Obviously regular season, they are always a little shaky, but once it's time to turn up, they do. So I want to make sure this Miami Heat team is set up to go in a championship this year and maybe next year. So let's get Jimmy Butler a championship before things are all said and done. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We are on the road to 50,000 subs at the moment. And uh, if you are new here, my name is Crushables. I'm a rebuilder on YouTube. And the way I like to do rebuilds is I try to be as realistic as I, po as I possibly can be in most videos. So if you enjoy realism and want to stick around, go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, because that's the way I love to do rebuilds. It's a lot of fun that way, in my opinion. But... Talking about the Miami Heat, as I said, Jimmy Butler, 34 years old. He's not getting any younger. It's time to turn things up. So I am using Joda Kelmer's 2K share scenario, by the way. So uh, uh, there could be some overalls fluctuated with or whatever. But basically how this is going to go, we're 11 and 9 at the moment. We are going to allow 2K to dictate where we go with this video. What I mean by that is we're going to simulate to the trade deadline. And to be honest with you, Pat Riley cannot strike out again on anybody else like he struck out on a few guys you could argue that Damian Lord wasn't his fault obviously I understand maybe Joe Cronin was being a little uh you know obviously stubborn or whatever and that that could be true uh who really knows and you can believe in your report you want obviously that's a whole mess but ignoring that part they've missed out on like Donovan Mitchell and other guys in the past we need to make sure we strike at someone at the deadline we need to get this team the help that it needs so I'm gonna go ahead to start this simulation or this rebuild which is similar to the trade deadline uh, this is our lineup at the moment, and obviously we're looking to improve it once we get the deadline, so I will see you guys there. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that's available on mobile or desktop. When you sign up for Prize Picks, this is the interface you're granted with. So obviously they have NBA, but they have all kinds of stuff outside of just NBA. They have soccer, they have COD. If you wanted to go ahead and play some COD or play some uh, entries on COD, you got uh, so uh, soccer, NFL, there's all tennis, Valorant, like there's a lot of stuff on Price picks, but basically how it works is choose between two to six players, two players being three times their entry, all the way up to six players being 25 times their entry. So, for example, if we go to three pointers made and we think Anthony Edwards is going to show up tonight and hit more than two and a half threes, you simply click more on his projection. If you want to go ahead and cross sports and you want to go to NFL Sunday and on Thursday, you think Mitchell Trubisky is going to throw for over 183 and a half yards, you simply click more on that projection as well. Um, it's a lot of fun. I've been using Price Picks since 2021. I swear by it. If you want to have Price Picks, use the code down in the description below. Use code Crushables to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. So thank you to Price Picks for sponsoring today's video. And a tool I'm swearing by with Price Picks is the GF's correlation and also optimizer tool. Basically, how the correlation tool works, it gives you a game script and you simply put the entry in. If you've been, if you've been playing every entry that this thing gives you since August 18th, you would currently be up 581 and a half units right now. Um, obviously it's something like this where they go ahead If Brock Purdy and Geno Smith are going to throw over their yards. Then most likely their receivers are going to benefit off that, which gives you a positive, positively correlated slip. And then the optimizer tool, basically how this works, it compares discrepancies across multiple sports books. So right now for, let's go to maybe, let's say Kyle Kuzma rebounds and assists. They want you to take the over on this projection because they have other sports books that obviously leaning towards uh, the, the juice is on the uh, over or whatever. I, I always have a hard time reading betting lines. But regardless, uh, 11 and a half. One, one sports books has this at 11 and a half. So you're getting a market value at 10 and a half on price fix. So it simply says, hey, click the more on that one. And that's how it works. Um, it's, a, it's a fun little tool to use. So if you want to check out any of these tools, correlation, optimizer, links down in the description below. Use my code to sign up. They also I also have their YouTube channel down there because they have a lot of informative videos. Uh, but thank you to DGF for also sponsoring this video. Back to the rebuild. All right, so we're starting with the trade deadline as we are 32 and 20. And what I meant by saying that 2K is going to dictate what we decide to do here. Uh, if we look at our scoring leaders, by the way, we have 18, 18 and a half, 13, 13. And then Tower Hero is somewhere just not playing just yet, I guess. So I guess he hasn't played a single minute, although obviously in real life he has. This is Joe Kilmer's share scenario. 2K needs to fix their start today, man. It's so stupid that they have not put that in yet. We're literally what a month into the season maybe even more and we haven't put like literally it start today and it just doesn't make any sense but how this is going to work we're going to just scan around the league and we're going to see what teams are selling what teams are rebuilding and what stars can we attract on this heat squad we have some draft picks we have some expiring salaries we have maybe a couple young players teams could maybe be interested in so let's take a look at what we got so the charlotte hornets they're selling uh do i want 
Lamelo, of course I do, but I don't think that's going to happen. And he's also injured at the moment. Uh, no one else really interests me there. Utah, they have Laurie Marketing. Definitely interesting. Uh, Miami is needed like a actual power forward. So I would definitely add Marketing to our list uh, on a guy that we could potentially get. That would actually be a really interesting addition for Miami. Not really sure if it's the culture a ton, but um, we'll keep looking. Sacramento, obviously Darren Fox would be definitely be something if we could get Darren Fox and with Jimmy Butler I mean come on now we might be cooking Knicks are uh, 34 17 it says a rebuilding I kind of hate when 2k has teams that are like in the playoffs rebuilding it doesn't make a lot of sense to me especially that above 500 like 17 games over 500 doesn't make any sense but uh Lakers which uh man the Lakers got bailed out with that uh timeout yesterday it should not have been a timeout uh but fun games nonetheless last night uh, Orlando, they're rebuilding. Paulo, I don't see them ever moving him, obviously. Uh, the Nets are rebuilding. Uh, Mikel Bridges, uh, they're the eighth seed. I mean, Mikel's asking price has been astronomically crazy, so I don't see a world where we can get him either. Indiana, Miles Turner and stuff like that. Um, Norms, Pelicans, nothing. Pistons, nah. Uh, Raptors are buying. They would be an interesting squad to go talk to, but that is not going to be on the table. Uh, Spurs... Uh, Keldon Vassell not really sure they'd move them anyway but obviously it's not what two it's not what I think in real life it's what 2k is dictating for us right now so Shea Coach Alexander obviously would be amazing but um Mike Conley Edwards they're re, you know they're contending so this one's interesting to me the Blazers uh Malcolm Brogdon also can be on this list because although the Blazers couldn't agree on a Dame scenario I don't know if they'd be willing to talk to each other about like maybe even Grant or Brogdon I think both those guys could be really good additions for Miami, uh, but I don't know if uh, Miami and Portland are ever going to talk again. Golden State Warriors, they're rebuilding, but I mean, I guess theoretically they could move on from Clay, but I don't really want him. The Wizards, they have Kuzma. I mean, Kuzma wouldn't be a bad get to add to this Miami Heat squad. Um, so that is definitely something we can look into as well. The Bulls, obviously the obvious destination with Levine and DeRozan. I have gotten Levine in a couple videos, so I don't really want to get him today. Uh, but that obviously DeRozan could be interesting as well. But I also don't like DeRozan's fit with the Heat anyway. And then I think our list might be done. Uh, Bain, John Morant, Hawks are selling. Obviously, we can get like DeJounte Murray, which would be interesting. Okay, so I'm kind of leaning towards uh, marketing or maybe even talking to the Blazers about, you know, again, it's going to be weird to think to the Blazers. And then Kuzma is also on my list. But let's let's start with this this let's go big or go home here because obviously the Miami he have a lot of salary I wonder if there's a way where we could get Brogdon and Jeremy Grant from the Portland Trailblazers at the trade deadline I think it'd be significantly awesome if we could now will we be able to I have no clue but we're gonna try anyway so uh Kyle Lowry's expiring contracts obviously gonna have to be in here so that's no brainer that's fine uh we're gonna need 12 more million in here so I actually think we could do this um Duncan Robinson uh, he's been pretty solid for the Miami Heat this year, but uh, I don't think I think his salary would have to be in here as well, unless if we threw Hero in, which Hero again doesn't make sense for Portland, so I don't see that happening. So let's say uh, Duncan Robinson. So Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, and then I think if you're Portland, you'd be very happy walking away with like two firsts, and then maybe Nikola Jovic is in the trade as well, or something along the lines of that. Maybe Orlando Robinson as a throw-in for Portland. Like I don't know, just trying to cook something up here. So let's say we did that um it looks like okay so i don't know if they're gonna be willing to accept this right now um probably not but we'll try it anyway they don't agree to it obviously right away which is fine i'm gonna throw a third first in here because i just think getting two guys that could start for us right away would be phenomenal and they agree we get brogdon and jeremy grant at the trade deadline three first nicole jovich might be rich but if it was like two first i think if i'm miami i'm doing it but again Portland and Miami talking to each other. It may not work, but uh, yeah, I honestly think this would make your squad very tough in the Eastern Conference. Look at your starting five now. Brogdon, Hero, Jimmy Butler, Jeremy Grant, Bam Adebayo. I mean, I think that would be amazing. If you're Miami, I'd try it. Again, Portland, Miami, don't know if they're going to speak, but I love this move for us. So just like that, starting five is looking phenomenal now. We have a really good rotation. Hero's back in the starting lineup now. Haywood Highsmith, Josh Richardson, Hami Hawkes. I love it. We are going to simulate to the end of the season now that those additions have been made. We're now at a four and a half pace in space. Jeremy Grant, Brogdon, amazing additions. I will see you guys at the end of the season now. So at the end of year one, Jokic wins MVP. Webb and Yama, rookie of the year. Chris Paul, six man, Klaxon defensive player. Jalen Johnson, most improved. And Durant's your clutch player of the year. And Joe Mazzula, 
coach of the year. So here's your all NBA first team: Jokic, Giannis, Durant, and beat uh, Doncic, of course. And then, do we get Jimmy Butler making one of these? We do not, unfortunately. But uh, we ended up as the fifth seed in the East. So obviously, we have a really good starting five now, and we have a two-year window with this. This team um, is very like there's no one leading the way, which is pretty interesting right now because Hero obviously usually goes off in 2K, uh, but. Joda might have ner uh, nerfed him a little bit, which uh, I don't totally hate. Ben Mabao, 17, Brogdon, 15 and a half, and then Jeremy Grant with 14 and 11 from Caleb Martin. So let's go ahead and see if we can beat the Cavaliers in round one. Obviously, we've got a tough little matchup in front of us. We're going to go fix the rotation to our liking. They actually want to start Hami Haquez over Grant, which uh, I just can't get behind. I mean, we gave up a lot to get these guys here, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start them. But let's simulate current round against Cleveland, and we are going to beat them in five. That is a W first round for us. Beating Cleveland is never an easy task. The fact that we just did that the way we did is really intriguing. But now we have to play Boston. So we'll see how this goes. Boston and Miami, obviously, a little bit of a brewing rivalry there. Simulate current round, and we are going to beat them in six as well. And now we get Philadelphia in round two. Should be very interesting. Maxi Melton, Oubre, Tobias Harrison, Bede, Covington. Somebody current round against them. We're going to be in a two to one series with them. By the way, just thinking back at the trade we just did, though, I will admit we probably gave up way too much, like definitely. So in real life, if you could go ahead and only give up like at least two first, I think I'd jump all over that if I'm Miami. Three first and Jovic is a little extreme, but I don't know. I think Grant could right now with the way he's playing could fetch two first in real life. He's been playing great for Portland, uh, but we can win this game four. That'd be absolutely huge for us. So let's go ahead and see if we can close this one out. And uh, yeah, we're going to. So we're going to even this series up. 30 points from Bam out of bow. But we got to win a huge game five. If we want any chance to beat Philadelphia. Because I don't I don't want to go down three to two to them. But right now, it's looking pretty solid for us. We're kind of blowing them out a little bit. And we are going to win a huge game five. Now, can we beat them in six is the question. We're going to be at home in Miami. I would love nothing more than close them out here. Head to the NBA Finals. And we may do just that unless we let them back in the game. And we are not going to. We are having our foot on the pedals. And we are in the NBA Finals. And now we get to play the Los Angeles Lakers rematch of the bubble NBA Finals. Now it's time to see if we can come out here and win ourselves a championship. Game one, one to zero. Great start. 10 point lead, 33 from Hero. Game two, they even it up. All right, we're going to go to SimCast right away. Huge game three here. Obviously, we've split games at home. We need to still one in LA. Hopefully we can do just this here in this game four or game three, I should say. And we are going to do just that 112 to 95. Can we still both them in LA? We can. Can we beat them in five to win a championship? No. Going to a game six back in LA. They want us to fix our rotation again. Once again, they want to start Hamid, Hami Hawkes. I just can't. I'm going to start Jeremy Grant still. All right, here we go. Game six, all or nothing. We need to come out here and take advantage. As, as we have a three to two lead. But right now, we might have to go back to Miami. Just kidding. Maybe. Okay, we got a close one. Year one, we have a close one, which is great. Now, let's see if we can keep the foot on the pedal to win our first championship in the video. Just like that, we already won a championship. We beat them by five. Jimmy Butler is your final MVP. So, we came out here and accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. Miami fans are probably upset with me with how much I gave up at the deadline for these two alone. But, hey, ended up in a championship, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, keep it going. So Donis Haslam, Iguodala, Al Horford, all those guys are retiring. Let's go straight to the lottery. Not that this is going to matter for us, obviously, but Charlotte's going to get one. Blazers, number three. And then uh, our pick ends up being 30. So we don't care, at least this year, about our future picks. Uh, staff signing, Eric Spolstra. We're going to leave that the way it is. Obviously, we're not going to fire him. Just won a championship. So let's go ahead and try to improve our bench even more. Because I feel like our bench could use uh, some work. And we could probably be even better next year. I mean, we can maybe go back to back. That'd be phenomenal. Uh, and then obviously Grant and Brogdon are locked up for a couple more years. So we're set with them. Don't think there's a single player that needs to be resigned in our starting five, which is a great feeling. So on draft night, we don't have a pick anymore, obviously. Hami Hawkins might develop into something else this year too for us, which is great. Kale Martin, huge resigning there. If we can get him back, Drew Smith, I'm going to accept. Fortunately, the man got really hurt uh, on the Cavs court. That really sucked towards ACL, I think, because of that. A hole in the Cavs court, which is just rough, man. Uh, Ish Wainwright, I mean, nah, I'm good. Free agency, uh, again, Kale Martin was like the one free agent I'm concerned about, and I am going to go ahead and extend that offer to him. And we should have money to do some more stuff. So, uh, Brogdon starting point guard, Hero starting two, Richardson as the backup two or three, I'm cool with, so that's fine. Uh, Haywood Highsmith, I did resign him as well. And then uh, backup center, I think could use some work. So, let's go see if we can get a good backup five 
The fact that we could maybe get Joe Val on this team would be phenomenal. Uh, Tillman also wouldn't be bad. But give me Isaiah Hardenstein. Uh, I would actually love that a lot. So we're going to get Caleb Martin, Isaiah Hardenstein to start this offseason, which improves our bench tenfold. We still have money for like Markel Fultz. Like that's kind of crazy. Bruce Brown. Uh, that would be wild to get Bruce Brown on this team. Tobias Harris could come to Miami. Um, we're going to go ahead and move Caleb Martin to the three, though. Caleb Martin will be our backup three, which is fine with me. We'll have him play secondary position two. We'll have that for us. So just like that, Richardson, Martin, Haywood I. Smith, and then Isaiah Hardenstein. Of course, Jaime Hawkes may take over that role. And then only thing we need maybe is a better backup point guard. Uh, Monte Morris is perfect. So we're going to sign Monte Morris. That improves our bench even further. So... Let's go to player progression hoping Hami Hawkes goes up uh he does in fact go up to 76 and they got Kale Martin up to an 80 hero up to an 84 Butler is down which is to be expected but we're gonna go for the back to back why not we're literally in this position to maybe go back to back here with this Miami Heat squad I wasn't really expecting when a championship year one but obviously I'm not complaining to get it out of the way immediately is a great feeling so uh you know, if you can get Brogdon Grant at the deadline if I'm Miami Maybe I do it. Maybe I do it. But let's go ahead. We got to cut one person here. So unfortunately, that may have to be um, RJ. It's going to be RJ. So we're going to cut RJ Hampton, and then we get in this season. So Parker is going to land his fourth overall, and we're pacing the space four and a half still. Starting five is this follow. Brogdon, Hero, Butler, Grant, Bam, and Abaya with Caleb Lamard, Monte, Morris, Isaiah Harsin, and Hami Hakez as our bench. Then Richardson and uh, Haywood Highsmith if minutes are needed for foul outs, which is fantastic. So we're going to go ahead. So only to the end of year two. Let's see how we do in year number two. So we are back in the playoffs, of course, and Jimmy Butler this year makes an All-NBA second team, scoring 20 points per game. But let's go ahead and see, as we're the first seed in the East. I didn't even know we were the first seed. I thought we were, like, just in the thick of things. But 20 points, 19, 15, 14 and a half, 13, and then 11. So let's see if we can go back-to-back -back here. That'd be phenomenal. We get Brooklyn in round one. I would uh, expect not to lose to Brooklyn. They got Joe Val, Russell Westbrook on their squad now. But some late current round against them. We do drop game one. We're actually in a tough series with them. Three to two. And we will beat them in seven, maybe. If we do beat them here, that is. So let's go ahead. They may want to start Hami Hawkins again. They continue to want to start Hawkins. You know what? I'll listen to them this time. Game seven in Miami. Let's hopefully not go home in round one. That would be actually tough. And uh, the first time I listened to the Hami Hawkins suggestion, it goes south. We're going to lose to the Brooklyn Nets. Wow. Uh, 128 to 111 we get dropped in round one very disappointing very sad to see that uh but we are going to go one more year on this we got the lakers going on to beat the knicks i don't know if there's any other big trades i want lebron retires a raptor and then draft lottery time uh pacers get one okay straight to staff signing we go eric spolstra we're gonna leave that the way it is obviously I'm not gonna fire him after that so armstrong and then let's just grab a wing whisper and then we should be ready to roll so I don't know if there's a big move I'm looking to do this offseason, but if there is, we should be trying to do it. Because obviously right now, I mean, I guess the one thing we could do is move on from Hero and get somebody different. Um, and then we're going to have to resign Brogdon, which I'm definitely open to. But he's up to an 86 overall, so I'm not like dying to get off of Hero. Jeremy Grant, maybe we could flip him if we wanted to. Uh, Martin and Monty Morris can maybe become something. I don't know. We may just run it back because we got the first seed in the East and then just... Oh, wow. Jim Butler has to be your son as well. Big, big, uh, big uh, thing we need to do there. So free agency, Jimmy Butler. He's got an offer from the Mavericks. Three years, 170.99. If I lose Jimmy Butler here, then we are in a lot of trouble. So we're going to go ahead and offer as much as I possibly can to get him back. Uh, I'm going to assume he would accept this. And let's see if we're his number one offer. And we are. So we are going to get Jimmy Butler back. That's big time. We're also going to resign Brogdon, as I said. I'm going to give him a two-year deal to bring him back. So, uh, Jim Butler, Brogdon, bring them both back to stay in Miami, which is great. And now it's time to figure out uh, what we're going to do with the rest. So, we actually have money for like a Fred Lee or even a Cam Thomas off the bench. Wow. Uh, Monty Morris, Brogdon, Hero. I think we signed Cam Thomas as our big addition. I think we do. Scores like crazy off the bench. What did he average last year? He averaged 16 points per game. Why not? Never have enough scoring. I'm going to offer Cameron Thomas a match. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Jane Hardy, another guy that I think could score uh, really nicely off the bench for us, which we're going to get him this time. And then back of fives, Mo Viner, Mo Bamba. Uh, actually, I wonder if I could trade for a better backup five. We have Hawkes or Hay Haywood Smith. I actually don't really have anybody I'm going to move on from. So we're just going to go ahead. You know what? Give Steven Adams a deal. Let's give Steven Adams a contract and uh, maybe he'll stay up to a 78 or whatever he is right now. So... 
Um, he's down to 77. It's not terrible. I definitely still love Stephen Adams as a back of five. So we're going to run it back uh, another year. I would have loved to have gotten, you know, I would have loved to be in the conversation right now talking about a three-peat. But unfortunately, that is just not the case. We got eliminated by Brooklyn in round one last year. So um, if I feel the need to make a trade, which I don't at the moment, because I felt really good about how our team did, I guess my, I mean, we got Hardy now as well. That should be more scoring off the bench. I guess we'll just see how things go. If I feel the need to make a big trade, I'll show you, but I'm going to probably try to avoid it. I just want to simply keep going and try to win one more championship. I would love to be talking about a three-peat right now, but unfortunately, only talking about maybe getting a second one here. So here we are with the third season as we are the second seed in the Eastern Conference this year. We had 19 from Hero, 17 from Bam, and then 15 from Jimmy Butler. Fell off a little bit of a cliff here, but hey, as long as we're still good, I guess that's what truly matters. We get Cavs in round one, so... They've added Jalen Suggs and Reddish to the mix. So let's see if we can take care of them this time around. And we are going to go down three to two once again. Man, we're going to have to start Hami Hawkes again, aren't we? I'm not doing it, man. I did it last time. It did not work. All right, huge game six. If we want any chance of maybe getting out of the first round, uh, Cleveland, obviously never an easy team to beat. But right now we're in a close one with them and we are going to beat them. So 102 to 81 going to a game seven in Miami. Let's just get our round one, please. If nothing else, I want to get our round one in year number three at this point. So, so far it's looking pretty decent and we are going to get out of round one. 77 to 103, absolutely blow them out. And now we got the Detroit Pistons. Cade, Jay Nivey, Asar, Ron Holland, Jalen Dern, a very good young starting five in Detroit. I'm a little intimidated by it, not going to lie. Again, I'm not starting Hami Hawkes. It has not worked, even though I tried it one time. Uh, I'm still going to start with Jimmy Grant. He's It's been working, so... Uh, somebody in current round against Detroit and we are going to sweep them. No sweat there. And now we get the Boston Celtics who we had a tough series with them a couple years ago. Uh, but they still have Porzingis, Drew Holiday. Uh, they've added Patrick Williams, the theory, Darlin, Pritchard and Jordan Walsh. Okay. So my current round against Boston and we're up two to two, or I should say we're in an even series rather. Okay. Once again, and this time they did not suggest starting Hami Hake. So game six in boston if we can win this one push them back to miami we could be in the driver's seat in this series it's looking good until now and boston has the lead so we're down eight five minutes left we could come back but it's not looking good we are going to blow this one away unfortunately so eastern conference finals appearance is going to come to an end we have a huge game six backs against the wall to force a game seven back to td garden in miami jimmy butler i need you to show up here and it's not looking good for us we're down eight in the fourth quarter Boston probably not going to let off the pedal, but we may be able to get back in this game. They have not scored in a little bit. We're down one and we take the lead. Okay. Six point lead right now with five minutes left. Can we keep running it with it? We have an eight point lead. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Don't slow down now. We've done all this work to get back in this game and we are going to force a game seven boys. We are forcing a game seven uh, back to TD Garden. Huge. Jaden Hardy was huge in that one as well. Hawkes, again, not, I'm not willing to go on that train. I'm just going to start Grant and live with the results. All right, here we go. Game seven in TD Garden to get to the NBA Finals for a second time in this video. So far, we have a close game. We have the lead right now. If we can run with it, that would be absolutely sweet. Fourth quarter, close game once again. Not surprised here. If we could beat them in Boston, get to the finals, that would be very, very good right now. We have a four point lead. It's going to be a one point game with 21 seconds left. I think we have to jump in and watch the aftermath of this. So we have the ball. I'm going to allow the computer to take care of this. I don't want to be the one that chokes this away. I'll let the computer do it instead. So here we go. 21 seconds left. We have ball. Boston's going to surely foul. I assume we're going to foul hero, send him to the free throw line. Okay, hero. Uh, wow. And I think Tatum might have just or no who was who fouled it i think it might have been Derek white actually here i was going to sink the first one and now he can maybe sink the second one and i don't know who just fouled out but it might have been an important piece i wasn't paying attention i think it was Derek white but regardless we have a three-point lead as long as we don't allow a three we should be headed back to the nba finals but of course we got to stop them here first so here goes this pivotal possession drew holiday kind of got an open gonna send it to darlin for the lee or for the tie not sure why darlin's the one taking that shot at the end but you know what uh i'll take it brogdon the free throw line it's going to sink the first one boston has no timeouts left either now we're gonna have a five point lead if he makes the next one and we do 
Boston with their lives on the line trust Theory Darlin to uh, hit the tying three. Very interesting approach, I will say. But Drew Holiday is going to pass it to Darlin again. Darlin. This time he actually hits it. Okay. Respect. Maybe Darlin's got that shot on him that I was not aware of. Okay. I don't know who he is. If he's a like, sharpshooter in real life and I'm not aware, I'm sorry. But 103-101. Brogdon's going to get the ball here. Drew Holiday is going to pressure him and foul him. All right, Brogdon. You need a hit two here. And then we should win this game. He's going to make the first one huge. And then if you make the next one, it's a four-point game. We should be riding off in the sunset. And we do. Just like that, 105 to 101. Two huge free throws. Drew Holiday is going to pass it to Darlin again. He's going to pass it to Tatum. Tatum back to Brown. Brown is going to miss it. And that is your ball game. We are back in the NBA Finals. Now, who do we get to play? As the question is either going to be the Pelicans or the Jazz. It is going to be the Pelicans. Zion Williamson is your conference finals MVP over in New Orleans. Here goes nothing. Zubach is starting five. CJ McCollum, Ingram, Zion, Trey Murphy. Someone in current round. And we are going to beat them in five to win our second championship of the video. Again, I would love to be talking about a three-peat, but unfortunately, Brooklyn beat us randomly. But I'm going to end it on that note. Two championships. I'll take it. Should Miami trade for Brogdon or Jeremy Grant? Should they trade for one of them? Or should they go all in on like Levine or... Maybe even Donovan Mitchell if he were to become available. I don't know. Should be interesting to watch what Pat Riley does at the deadline. I don't think they can afford to strike out again, man. They need to make some type of move to bit, to put this team over the top because obviously the Bucks and the Celtics got a lot better this offseason. Um, not necessarily their fault again. I will say that, but they need to do something. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.